It was a gruesome incident that shocked the NHL. Oh my, oh my God, what happened? Oh, please take the camera off oh, and don't geez. even bring it over there, please. Oh my God. And continues to shock people to this day. Oh my gosh. Is that blood on the ice? Oh my, oh my what? God. What Holy oh shit. God. One of the most dangerous injuries I've seen ever. Oh no, stop it. No, no, no. It's March 22nd, 1989. A seemingly normal game between the St. Louis Blues and the Buffalo Sabres stopped in horror as goaltender Clint Malarchuk goes down, bleeding from his neck. A six-inch laceration that partially severed the jugular. Fans were so horrified with what they saw. I've never seen so much blood in all my life. While the players scramble, the team's medical staff rushes to the ice. But Malarchuk was fearing the worst. All I wanted to do was get off the ice. My mother was watching the game. I didn't want her to see me die. Jim Pizzatelli, a former combat medic and the team's athletic trainer, kept pressure on the wound. He stayed by his side as Malarchuk was rushed to the hospital. One and a half liters of blood and 300 stitches later, Clint Malarchuk seemed to have pulled through. After surgery to repair the damage last night, Malarchuk was up and about today. Clint Malarchuk had just survived one of the worst moments in NHL history. But as bad as this incident was, he would come to struggle through something much worse. There's a bullet lodged in my skull, and I put it there. What would you expect someone to do after surviving a traumatic experience like that? You expect them to rest, recover. This guy, he was back on the ice in 10 days. I am in a, in a hurry to get back. I want to get the pads on and, and get back in there because I think the longer you wait, the, long, the tougher it is mentally anyways. And I was brought up with a cowboy mentality. You get bucked off a horse, you get right back on. That I'm not concerned with Clint Malarchuk reacting uh, negatively. He'll be right there when the, when the old puck's dropped again. That's right, it's part of the game. I depicted everything that blue-collar sports town loved in an athlete. Courage, gritty, hard-working. And the pressure he felt to come back was part of a bigger problem in hockey culture. I mean, hockey in general, the culture of hockey is, these guys are top. They want to play. They, they don't want to miss time. They, they don't want to miss games. And with that tough mentality, often comes a culture in sports of players sucking it up or playing through their injuries. You play hurt because if you don't play hurt and somebody gets a chance yeah. that's behind you, yeah. you might be out. So it wasn't just Clint's cowboy mentality that rushed him back. It was the mentality of the entire league. But going back on the ice was the last thing Clint needed. As a goalie or a hockey player, the game happens so fast that you don't have time to think, you don't have time to doubt yourself, and you don't have time to worry about being hurt. You could be putting yourself at a major disadvantage if you're not 100% ready to go. I came back kind of like a tough guy. You know, stitches come out, you can play. And we think we're good, but we don't know that we're doing good. We just don't know. Depression started to really sink in. I started to have flashbacks. The nightmares were the worst. I'd be sound asleep and I'd see that skate come up and I'd wake it straight up in bed. I wasn't telling anybody because you're supposed to be tough. NHL goalie, you're supposed to be the rock. And so I was doing all this uh, silently. As Clint suffered, so did his game. So they sent me to the minors. I went into the coach, my eyes full of tears, and said, I can't do this, I gotta retire. I've been struggling for three years now with this. That's a tough thing to overcome. For some people, just getting back on the horse is the best thing to do and get back in there. And for other people, that fear may always be there. Clint had no choice but to retire from the game that he had used as an escape since he was a kid. For me as a kid, I didn't feel normal. I grew up in northern Canada and I had a lot of anxiety. I had depression. I even had OCD symptoms. But hockey was my life. That was my only freedom. The closer I got to home, the more my anxiety would come in. See, I was going home to an abusive alcoholic father. At first, hockey was an escape from his father, but as an adult, it became an escape from his personal demons. You would get in the game, and, and you'd, that would be, you'd be on stage, and the light would be on. When the light was off, when the game was over, that's when your, your problems started. If I could eliminate the between the games, I'd probably be right, okay. Right. But now the thing that he was using as an escape had traumatized him. So what do you do when the thing you escape to becomes just another thing you need to escape from? And it was even harder to escape when another brutal on-ice injury happened in Buffalo. Richard Zednick is cut wide open. Bleeding profusely, he immediately skated to the Panthers bench where the training staff attended to him. He was then rushed to Buffalo General Hospital. Seeing the blood on the ice in the same city 
triggered Clint and brought him to an even darker place. Oh, I was on way too much medication. They bumped everything up and added to it, and I was drinking as well. I was up to 30 beers a day. And then one day on his ranch in Nevada. I went behind the barn. I found him sitting by the back behind our tack room. I was shaking. I was sweating. He just looked at me and he says, you have no idea what I'm going through. I just want to turn it off. Ben was laying on a kind of a stool in front of me and... I just grabbed the rifle. And I pulled that trigger. Just like his brutal on-ice accident almost 20 years before, Clint miraculously survived. The bullet stopped just millimeters from his brain. Woke up in intensive care after a two-month coma with a bullet still in my head. How many people can say they have their throat cut open and a bullet to the head and still be standing? Grateful to be alive. Uh, they sent me to a treatment facility. Then Clint was caught completely off guard when he was diagnosed with PTSD. When I was in this facility, the first two months are going, you got PTSD. And I'm like, why? What do, you, what do you mean? I don't have that because I'm a rock star in Buffalo. Call them. They worship me. I mean, I was back in 10 days. I was insulted. It was a hard step. I was buying into that stigma of this is a weakness. And once I figured out that it's not, a, you're, you're sick, you're not weak. Finally accepting that I had PTSD, um, that, was, that was the first step of getting well. Now on the road to true recovery, Clint discovered something else about himself. Yeah, I have a chemical imbalance of the brain. I don't produce enough serotonin. If you're diabetic, you have a chemical imbalance. Your insulin levels are wrong. So what's the difference? Facing his mental health struggles directly, Clint realized how much he could help others felt a calling. I thought, you know, I'm, a, I'm here for a reason. I've lived some tragic, tough moments, and I've had some great moments, and I should put them out there for people. Clint wrote a book about his off-ice battles with mental health and became a national bestseller. He does speaking tours, helping out other people who are going through the same thing. He went through a lot. Like, he's an amazing person, and he's a good role model for, for a lot of people. So many people that struggle with mental illness think they're just crazy and they don't want to come out. They're not alone. Do not suffer in silence. It's amazing when you start sharing with people and they share back. I thought I was the only one. I've been so depressed. A lot of people are going to say, me too. I'm doing great and it's all because I share. You know, everybody says, can the NHL do more for players that might be struggling with this? No, they can't. Society can. Today, Clint is no longer trying to escape himself. I would not be the person I am today having I went through all the things I did. Reach out, help one another, love one another. Pain is mandatory, suffering is optional. If you need help, be true to yourself, admit it. You're not a weakling, it's not a weakness. <laughs>